Hi, I'm Fire Communication Dispatcher John Orozco, and this is Report on Conditions. Fire Department, what's the address of your emergency? This week on Report on Conditions, we'll take you to a residential structure fire in Mecca, a traffic collision in Thermal, and we proudly highlight Medal of Valor recipient Chad Burns. Hi, and thanks for joining Cal Fire, Riverside County Fire Department's Report on Conditions. I'm April Newman. Last week, May 16th through May 22nd, our firefighters responded to 3,476 calls for service. Included in those calls were 2,685 medical emergencies and 143 fire-related calls. Of the fire calls, 27 were vegetation fires and 13 were structure fires. Let's take a deeper look at a few highlighted incidents from this past week. On Wednesday, May 18th, the firefighters responded to reports of a residential structure fire located at the 91,000 block of 6th Street within the unincorporated area of Mecca. The first on-scene unit reported an active fire from a semi-trailer to the rear of the property, with threats of spreading to an additional trailer, outbuilding, and power pole nearby. Thanks to quick thinking and efficient work, firefighters were able to stop the fire from spreading to the nearby residents. However, due to fire damage on the power pole, the power needed to be disconnected to the saved residents. No civilian or firefighter injuries were reported. Again on Wednesday, in the city of Lake Elsinore, firefighters from Lakeland Fire Station 11 and McVicker Park Fire Station 85 responded to a motorcycle accident where the driver hit a bush and was then ejected into a wall. The arriving engine companies provided advanced life support to the patient until they were transported by AMR to a local hospital with major injuries. Riverside County Sheriff's Department oversaw the investigation. In the early morning hours of Saturday, May 21st, firefighters were dispatched to a traffic collision near the intersection of Highway 86 and Avenue 62 in Thermal. The first arriving company officer reported a two-vehicle head-on collision with two patients requiring extrication with major injuries the crews were able to safely remove both patients without the use of extrication equipment. One patient was transported by a ground ambulance and the other was taken by Mercy Air Ambulance to a nearby hospital for treatment. No injuries occurred to fire personnel. I got what it takes. I've got what it takes. I've got what it takes. Effective as of Monday, May 23rd, Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department Chief Bill Weiser has moved forward with closing six hiking areas throughout Riverside County. The following hiking trails have been identified as hazardous fire areas and are being closed to lessen the opportunity for future wildfires to spark. For your convenience, we've included a link in the description that outlines the affected areas, and we thank you for your understanding and cooperation. I'm Fire Captain Craig Knight, and this is Did You Know? So one of the many tools we use in the fire service is the K970 rotary saw. It has many purposes. From forcible entry, we can use it to cut steel doors, metal gates, as well as locks. And so that way we can gain access to extinguish the fires and it allows us to do that very quickly. Another purpose of this is for ventilation. We can use it for vertical ventilation on a building to remove a roof so that we can let out the hot gases and heat from that building so the crews inside are able to extinguish the fire uh, quickly and any victims that are inside have a more attainable uh, living space. It can also be used for vehicle access. If a vehicle is on fire, we need to be able to get underneath that hood and we'll use this saw to cut that metal hood off and to gain access to extinguish that fire. And another reason we have these saws is for urban search and rescue to be able to cut concrete. And so the blade that we have on there allows us to cut a variety of materials from concrete to metal and we can use it for cutting concrete to gain access as well. For his valiant efforts during a confined space rescue in Temecula in March of 2020, Firefighter Chief Chad Burns was awarded with the Governor's State Employee Medal of Valor. Let's take a look at his award ceremony in Menifee from this past Wednesday. 
I'm Bill Weiser, the Fire Chief of Riverside County Fire Department and the Cal Fire Riverside Unit. Today, May 18th, we are here to honor Chad Burns at the City of Menifee for getting the State Medal of Valor. So Chad's was receiving the citation today for heroic action of March 3rd of 2020, where he went in to rescue a victim in a confined space in Temecula. He wound up uh, traversing an 18-inch pipe for 175 feet trying to rescue the victim, the rope system failed. And one of the most amazing things about it is, is Chad had come out, regrouped, and then volunteered to go all the way back in to rescue the victim again. It's an amazing feat of heroics. Uh, those uh, conditions are not anything anybody trains for. And what Chad did is simply amazing. And we're here to honor uh, his heroic efforts and his receiving the highest honor in the state service, the state of California's Medal of Valor. So, Firefighter Burns, well done, excellent effort. We appreciate you putting yourself at risk to help and save others. And I know we have the Medal of Valor here, and we're gonna go ahead and place that on you today, if we can. Thank you all very much for being here. Uh, that means a lot. Um, thank you to the city. Um, I spent a lot of time in the city. Um, thank you to all the battalion. I'd like to point out two people. I'd like to point out Chief Boulevard and Captain Curtis. Without their leadership, um, I wouldn't probably have been able to do what I did. They set me up for complete success, so I was able to do what I needed to do uh, and perform like I should. Thank you very much. This week's shout out goes to Los Pinos Crew 2, which is part of the California Conservation Corps for receiving the highest score at this year's wildland readiness exercise. Let's join conservationist one, Aaliyah Cotton, and Fire Captain B, John Hecker, at the Los Pinos Fire Center in Lake Elsinore. Once a year, all of the hand crews in the Riverside unit, we get together to do a Batista drill or this wildland preparedness drill, um, where we cut line, we do a tool out, we do a fire shelter. Each one of the crew members is asked individual questions. It's essentially a way to test each crew and make sure that they're typed out or that they're prepared to fight fire in a real life situation. The goal of the Batista drill is to show that a crew is typed out, to make sure that each crew can perform as they would in, in a real life situation. So like take the line construction part for instance. For every member of the crew, which we had 15, uh, you had to cut 15 feet per person. And then each of those feet of line has to have a, a minimum of four feet. It has to be completely down to bare minimum soil. And then it has to be clear of like any brush or loose particles. And that's not just on the ground, it has to go all the way up on either side. So like we're checking to make sure that nothing's coming over the line um, and just making sure that we can, as a crew, construct enough feet in the time allotted to demonstrate that we are competent on a fire line. So just like in a real life situation, when we're training for the Batista drill, it's all about communication and teamwork, constant motivation from both the leads of the crew, myself and my, uh, my captain. My job as the captain is to make sure we're getting line put in productively. So uh, production is, is the thing, because when we go to fires, you gotta be able to cut line and we gotta be able to contain it and crew member needs to know what their job is. So I'm constantly up and down the line telling them where to go, what to do, if they need to do a little more here, a little less here. So it's just, like I said, it's preparation for fire season. So on the tool out, the hike, the line construction, as well as the um, fire shelter deployment, no points missed. Each one of the guys was in step, knew their information and was exactly uh, how we train to be. So the award that we got, as I understand it, is just from the Riverside unit. So it's given to the captain of our crew and then the kind of hog crew title is awarded to our crew itself. Like you are a hog crew, you're gonna get down and dirty and do whatever you need to do to, uh, to pass the Batista drill, to construct good line, to put out a fire. Oh, I mean, I'm very proud of them. I mean, it's, they, they, I couldn't teach them some things, but they had to put in the work to make it happen. So they, they listened and did what they were instructed to and prevailed. 
Over this past week, Public Information Officer and Fire Captain Richard Cordova, along with Captain Schutz and Division Chief Lucas Spellman, were assigned to the California Incident Management Team 2, which was sent to New Mexico to aid in the Calf Canyon fire. Let's join Captain Cordova as he interviews Battalion Chief Jefferson Bueller with Kirkland Air Force Base. Hello, I'm Captain Richard Cordova with California Incident Management Team 2, and I'm here with Battalion Chief Buller. Uh, thank you uh, for joining us today. Uh, can you uh, tell us a little about what you guys are doing here and who you're with? So I'm Jefferson Buller. I'm a Battalion Chief with Kirtland Air Force Base Fire Department in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we were deployed up here for an ARF standby assignment to help out the Forest Service doing hot refuels and ARF support for their hella base here in Angel Fire. Very nice. And I think what a lot of people need to understand is that when we fight major wildland fires like this, it takes a great team to put this together. Not only different fire department agencies, but also dipping into the military and pulling their resources out. So here at uh, Angel Fire Hella Base, what's your guys' main function? So we're here to protect the aircraft and the pilots. We're specifically here to do hot refuels as the aircraft come back from their sorties and actually refuel their aircraft before they take back off to do their next mission. I mean, this thing's massive. I mean, yeah. One, how much water is in here and what type of equipment do you guys carry in here? So this is one of our P-19s. This is one of our smaller crash trucks. This track, crash truck carries 1,500 gallons of water, 210 gallons of foam, 500 pounds of PKP. So on this aircraft, it's very specialized. It's specifically made for ARF rescue for aircraft firefighting. So we have two different modes we can put the truck into. We can use it as in a structural mode uh, if we wanted to go in and actually use a structural landline, or we put it into an ARF mode to where we use turrets and go in and actually fight fires. I'd like to thank you. I'm sure the citizens around this area would like to thank you for guys being here. Uh, it's a great resource I have here to not only protect the citizens here in the surrounding community, but also here on the Hell Attack Base. To stay up to date on current incidents as they happen in Riverside County, be sure to follow at CalFireRRU on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Did you happen to capture any pictures or videos of our firefighters in action? If so, send them our way at rrupio at fire.ca.gov. On behalf of your Cal Fire, Riverside County Fire Department, Public Affairs, and Community Education Bureau, I'm April Newman. Thanks for watching.